Many people predict that fully autonomous vehicles are still decades away, while others claim that it's right around the corner. Tesla has just begun rolling out its full self-driving beta to more customers, and other companies are also working on self-driving solutions. In this video, I want to talk about the importance of self-driving cars, summarize the current state of self-driving, and talk about the near to distant future. I'll try to make this as approachable as possible while also being fairly detailed. By the way, for the purposes of the video, I'm using the terms autonomous, self-driving, and driverless interchangeably. Before we talk specifics, I want to address the questions or concerns that someone might have if they haven't given self-driving much thought or if they consider themselves skeptics. The ultimate goal, of course, is to have a vehicle that is completely self-sufficient. It doesn't need human intervention at all and can make correct decisions with high accuracy. This is commonly referred to as level 5 autonomy. We're not quite there yet, as I'll discuss later in the video. However, once we do reach level 5 and, of course, gain regulatory approval, we can mostly regain the amount of time we spend commuting by car. According to a poll conducted in 2019, the average US driver spends 35 minutes per day commuting to and from work. That's roughly 213 hours per year. Note that the actual amount may vary greatly by individual, but imagine what you could do with another 213 hours per year. If you could fully delegate driving to your vehicle, you could hypothetically spend that commute time napping, playing a game, getting extra work done, or just relaxing. Additionally, the price of rideshare would go down dramatically because the driver would be removed from the equation. Imagine not having to pay $100 for a ride to the airport. Most people barely use their cars outside of commute and errands, so they could lend their car to a network of rideshare vehicles and earn extra money on the side. In fact, car ownership wouldn't even be nearly as essential as it is now if you could cheaply and easily hail a driverless rideshare vehicle. Finally, consider all of the space in cities dedicated to parking. If a driverless car could drop you off and pick you up as needed, the need for parking could be reduced substantially. What was previously a parking lot could become a park or additional housing. If you're still not convinced about this potential driverless future, let me know in the comments and we'll have a dialogue. Before we go any further, let's talk about the most commonly used classification system for self-driving cars, defined by a group known as SAE International. This system places self-driving cars in one of six levels, numbered 0 through 5. Level 0 implies no autonomous system whatsoever, while level 5 requires no human intervention at all. Most modern vehicles at the time of this video are somewhere between level 1 and level 2. More specifically, the popular solutions nowadays, like Tesla's Autopilot and Kama AI's OpenPilot, are examples of level 2 autonomy. Things get a little complicated after level 2 though. Level 2 is considered hands off, level 3 is eyes off, level 4 is mind off, and level 5 is considered steering wheel optional. In my opinion, getting past level 2 will be an enormous regulatory hurdle, and in practice will probably be on level 2 for a while until we're finally at level 5. I'll talk about my reasoning for this later, but first let's take a look at where the various companies are right now. Full disclosure, my current vehicle is a Tesla Model 3, and my future vehicles will likely be Teslas as well. I am very tempted to get a Cybertruck once those are available, assuming I can afford one when that time comes. I know aesthetically they're an acquired taste, but as a sci-fi nerd, this is my ideal vehicle. I say all this because while I strive to be objective as possible, this video is heavily weighted toward Teslas and is probably influenced by my confirmation bias. With that out of the way, let's talk about the current state of the industry starting with non-Teslas. Of course, all the old school car companies are in various states of electrifying and automating their fleets. There are a plethora of cars with auto steer or adaptive cruise control which meet the SAE standard for level 2 automation. And yes, this includes Tesla's autopilot software, which comes standard when you purchase a Tesla. And at the risk of sounding biased, it's probably the best solution out there. Don't at me. Probably the most promising non-Tesla contender is Waymo. Waymo is owned by Google and is taking a radically different approach than Tesla in its path to L5. Waymo is attempting to perfect full self-driving one locale at a time, starting with Phoenix, Arizona, where you can request a fully autonomous rideshare vehicle right now and experience a completely driverless ride. The idea supposedly is to expand one locale at a time, starting with the least difficult scenario and progressing in difficulty horizontally. Tesla, on the other hand, is expanding vertically, using a strategy that I'll describe in the next session. But before we do that, I'll go through some honorable mentions. 
First, there's Kama AI, which provides a kit that you can attach to existing modern vehicles, thereby retrofitting them to support level 2 autonomy. Kama AI is proudly a level 2 solution only, and its open pilot system is fully open sourced. There are also a few other notable solutions in the works, including San Francisco based Cruise, Intel's Mobileye, and various Chinese companies, including AutoX, Pony.ai, and WeRide. It is worth noting that while a few companies claim to be SAE level 3 or higher, I'm highly skeptical because I don't think that'll pass regulatory scrutiny in the near term, especially in the United States. Now that we've talked about some non-Tesla cars, let's talk about what most of you are probably interested in, Tesla's full self-driving capability, which is slowly rolling out to FSD owners and subscribers that have a certain minimum safety score. This safety score and its underlying formula are documented in detail on the Tesla website, and it includes the following data points. Your number of forward collision warnings, hard braking, aggressive turning, whether or not you tailgate other cars, and forced disengagements. The formula for this score will evolve over time to more closely predict your probability of getting into an accident. The skating mechanism for the FSD beta ensures that only the safest drivers have access to the system while it's still in its infancy. Access to FSD beta will be rolled out at a rate of around 1,000 cars per day, starting with the highest score 100 and proceeding in descending order. Elon says that the private FSD beta has been progressing for about a year with 2,000 participants and zero accidents. There are still lots of edge cases to discover and fix, which is why for the time being, FSD participants must be incredibly vigilant and ready to take over at any time. Those edge cases are an extremely hard challenge, as there are so many rare scenarios that might be obvious for a human to navigate but unfortunately prove to be especially challenging for a training model to handle. With our current understanding of machine learning models, such a scenario usually needs on the order of thousands of examples to train on, which is where Tesla's simulation stack comes in. The simulation replays certain scenarios, both with human-prepared and procedurally generated environments, in a way where even the rarest of edge cases have adequate representation in the training model. The path from where we are now to full L5 autonomy will involve the March of Nines. When talking about reliability or high availability of services, having a 100% reliable product or service is virtually impossible, so engineers will commit to a certain number of nines. One nine represents 90% of uptime or reliability, two nines is 99%, three nines is 99.9% .9 and so on. The higher the criticality of your product or service, the more nines you need. As the training model improves and more edge cases are discovered, we'll see a continuous improvement in reliability, which will manifest to the end user in the form of fewer disengagements. Tesla collects an incredible amount of data from its cars, and providing this data to regulators and convincing them of the reliability of their cars will be essential to achieving level 5. Until that time is reached, those of us driving Teslas must be vigilant in making sure we're paying attention to the road. And we should basically treat the self-driving side of our car as a student driver, and accept the fact that it'll likely make mistakes more frequently than we do, at least for now. Correct me if I'm wrong, but in my mind, we'll be stuck at level 2 for a while, and then suddenly, someday, Legislation is passed and will be at level 5. Then we'll finally be able to legally fall asleep at the wheel on our way to work. One thing to keep in mind though is that each additional 9 of reliability results in a 10x reduction in errors or unhandled edge cases. Our level 2 driving experiences, in practical terms, will gradually start resembling the level 5 driving experience. And from what I've seen in the full self driving beta so far, that will probably start happening right around the corner. Make sure you pay attention at all times until we're officially at level 5 though. Your life or someone else's life may depend on it. Let's make this rollout nice and smooth and leave a good lasting impression on the general public and regulators. That's it for this video. I would greatly appreciate if you smash that subscribe button. And let me know in the comments if you have any criticisms or suggestions for future videos. I'll see you in the next one.